this is music and this is the last day of the summer of Simon. <laughs> Welcome to the last episode of the Summer of Simon subseries of the First Impressions series. In this subseries, I've been following up on an overwhelming and amazing and very generous VCLT I was sent by none other than Mr. Pieface himself, Simon Wedwang. Go and check out his channel, especially if you like extreme metal. He shows a lot of that stuff. He's uh, also uh, a very generous member of uh, the metal corner of the vinyl community. This is the last batch of CDs. They are all compilations and they're they're interesting. So up first we have this one here, a tribute to Iron Maiden. Bit of a mystery. First off, the songwriting credits on the back are wrong, a lot of them. For example, it says that uh, Wasted Years was co-written by Bruce Dickinson and Yannick Gers. It says that Fear of the Dark was co-written by Adrian Smith and Steve Harris. So there are lots of these kind of weird things on here um, in terms of, of uh, songwriting. We don't know who the artists are that cover Iron Maiden. Um, the production is very, very, very different from song to song. Some of them sound like they were recorded in the same session. Some of them sound very different. On some of the songs, it sounds like the drums are MIDI drums. Other songs sound very organic, as if they were recorded in a garage. So that's all very weird too. It sounds like Paul Diano actually sings on a lot of the early songs uh, from when he was actually in the band. It also sounds like uh, Biff from Saxon sings on a couple of songs. And then you have some, some vocalists that I don't recognize. So it's weird. It's a very weird uh, thing, this. Uh, the covers themselves are kind of like from subpar to decent, but I enjoyed them anyhow because I like the original songs. I mean, they're, they're pretty faithful covers, good songs to begin with. The guitar solos are not the same, but I can live with that. But this one is kind of a fun kind of curiosity thing to have in your collection. Up next, Kerrang! The Album 2009. Double disc set, uh, 42 songs on here. The first disc is, uh, f in my opinion, pretty much pretty terrible. Uh, it's full of pop punk. And then you got some other kind of more like, like late 2000s teen angst stuff. Uh, just to give you an idea of uh, where we're at on the first disc. The least bad song, in my opinion, is a Nickelback song. So there you go. Disc two is a bit more up my alley. It's a bit heavier. Uh, you do have uh, Starting Over with Kill Switch Engage. I think that's a pretty good song, actually. Um, and there is, there's some Mastodon as well. So you have some good stuff. There's a Lamb of God song, too, uh, which I quite appreciate. Um, but there's also, I mean, there's a lot of, of uh, metal core, um, some math core as well. There's a Rollo Tomasi song, um, lots of new metal. You got Slipknot, you got Static X, for example, and um, a little bit of groove metal too. So it does kind of capture metal as, you know, just the way the metal scene was in the late 2000s. And a lot of these genres and artists on here on disc two are kind of a laughing stock now, like, you know, metal core, uh, new metal, some groove metal too. But I think it's important to keep in mind that after in the late nineties and the early two thousands, when metal was not popular at all, it was actually new metal and metal core. And also to some extent, uh, groove metal, that brought it back into the limelight, that brought in a new generation of fans who would eventually discover, you know, the the other older genres of metal. I think that's very important to keep in mind. So that makes this one interesting as a kind of a historical artifact. Up next, Kerrang! Forever, 
another Kerrang! compilation, this time only 15 songs. We start out with two live uh, songs by Metallica, Hit the Lights, and uh, Flying High Again by Ozzy Osbourne. They're pretty bad live songs, to be honest, but pretty cool as well. But then it's a lot of metal core and um, even more new metal too. Um, you got some Blink 182. You have uh, Korn, the Adidas song. Not a fan of that, to be honest. I know a lot of Korn fans out there. I just don't like that song. Uh, Bullet for My Valentine. Uh, that's a pretty cool Slash song, um, if I'm being honest on here. Uh, for some reason, I quite liked the uh, uh, Night of the Hunter by 30 Seconds to Mars. So, And there's Anthem by Bring Me the Horizon, which I think is, is awful too. Uh, so it's kind of a mixed bag. But again, well, there's, there's Afterlife by Avenged Sevenfold. I actually think that's a pretty good song. Uh, but again, it's an interesting kind of snapshot of what the metal scene was like back then to the point that apparently blink 182 is considered part of this scene there you go uh and here we have another kerrang one class of 2006 um so yeah as you can imagine a lot of 2000s metal stuff uh metal core and uh, new metal and uh, yeah, let's see. Well, there's a little bit of because black metal was actually kind of going strong uh, in, in that time. So was progressive metal, actually. Uh, but um, there's a little bit of black metal on here. There's an enslaved song on here. Um, Path to Vanir, which I think is a very good song. There's King by Satyricon, which is kind of weird, if I'm being honest. Uh, Lamb of God, uh, Black in the Cursed Sun, pretty good song too. Um, Detonation by Trivium, I quite like that one. Um, there's not a whole lot of metalcore in their style at this point, I think. There's Come Clarity by In Flames. Watered Down Melodeath was big back then too, not a great song in my opinion. Uh, Shameful by Atreo, didn't do much for me. There's a Wolf, Wolf Mother song, but it's... Uh, white unicorn which is a bit meh to me so uh yeah there's a billy talent song which uh devil in a midnight mass which i kind of liked strangely enough so but again an interesting snapshot of of the kind of weird metal scene in the 2000s lots of 2000s teen angst music on this one too um and i know We've all been there. We've had our eras of teen angst. Mine was just a little bit earlier than the 2000s. Uh, we have more stuff here. More uh, Kerrang! Uh, 17 tracks on this one. It's called this Devil's Music. Uh, and this one is... Uh, I think this one is a little bit earlier. You got some uh, Rollins Band. Monster, not his greatest song in my opinion. Uh, there's a pitch shifter, so some industrial kind of, uh, almost like you got some prodigy-like drum beats. I don't know what, what that style of, of electronic music is called. Um, let's see, do we have, do we, yeah, very interesting. Um, there is From This Day by Machine Head. Now, I've, I never really followed Machine Head. I had some friends who were big Machine Head fans back in the 90s. And that was like uh, uh, like quite heavy groove metal. And uh, But I never really followed Machine Head, uh, if I'm being completely honest. So I hear the song on here, right, from, uh, from This Day by Machine Head. And I see this picture of machine head down here and i'm thinking what in the world is going on this this is new metal this is not their kind of you know a quite heavy groove metal so so i thought that was interesting and now i understand why a lot of people have kind of mentioned to me how much of a joke machine head you know were at this time uh so that, that's just interesting I don't hate from this day. 
um, not a great song either, if I'm being honest, but it was kind of interesting to hear that for sure. And then the question is, of course, were they chasing trends, which is artistically questionable, of course, or were they just inspired by the younger bands who were out there? And if that's the case, I think that's pretty cool, even if I don't like that song that much. Um, but yeah, you, you have a I hope you die by the bloodhound gang on here. So yeah, again, kind of meh song, but kind of funny in a way too. Uh, so yeah, again, kind of interesting just as a snapshot of the scene back in the day. Uh, and then there's this one here, the filth and the fury, kind of a similar thing. This is just from the metal hammer, uh, magazine. Uh, the first track is a uh, CD ROM kind of thing. So that's, you know, not, uh, uh, it's a cradle of filth song, I, I think, but I, I didn't watch that. So to me, it starts with the second track, which is a live pitch shifter song. Uh, it's not the kind of music I like, but you know, whatever. And uh, you got the uh, a Cradle Filth song on here too. Uh, her Ghost in the Fog, kind of gothic, black metal, somewhere in between. Again, not really stuff that appeals to me that much. Uh, there's Downset, kind of new metal. Um, with uh i guess kind of early new metal this one is from 2000 i th yeah from 2000 uh kind of early new metal with some hardcore roots uh what else do we have here there is uh the haunted the ninth track the haunted this is weird too because it's like three and a half haunted songs just on one track and it just cuts off in the last track, but at least it's like thrash metal and it's actually pretty good. They were, uh, I think, a good band. I don't know if they're still going um, going strong or whatever. Uh, so that was that was pretty cool, the Haunted one. The rest is, again, not my cup of tea, but it's an interesting snapshot of what the metal scene looked like in the late 90s, right? When it was had all gone weird and all that stuff. And the... Last kind of metal thing is this one here, Metal Killers Collection Volume 3. So this is a pretty solid collection of 70s and 80s metal songs. Um, well, there's Cat Scratch Fever 2 by Ted Nugent. Uh, Hot Take, I don't like that song. I think it's boring. Don't like Ted Nugent's music either. I think it's boring. Hot Take, I know. Whatever. Uh, but you have some... some Really cool songs on here. There's Bark at the Moon by Ozzy Osbourne. Another hot take. Not a big fan of the vocals on that song, but I like the instrumental part. It's bookended by Hole in the Sky by Black Sabbath. And I do really like the vocals on there. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Metal Health by Quiet Riot. Um, Hidden Run by Magnum. So that's a more like a, a commercial hard rock song, but I, I like it. There's Don't Let Me... Be Misunderstood by Gary Moore, which I think is a great song. Uh, With the Rogue Crew by Motorhead, just noisy, almost punky. Uh, All for One by Raven, is a great song too. And then of course, maybe, probably to me, the highlight on here, that's Free Will Burning by Judas Priest. It's just a great song. Uh, Burning by Accept, kind of a boogie rock song, which is kind of weird, but fun. Uh, there's Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster Cult, which is a bit out of place, to be honest, but at the same time, it kind of fits into the so just the history of the genre, right? It's part of the history of metal, but it, it's kind of out of place in this one. Uh, there's Easy Living by Uriah Heep, which is okay too. Walk This Way by Aerosmith, the original one. Um, I think I actually like the one they did with uh, Run DMC better. Uh, and then another highlight. Uh, I'm Alive by Halloween, which is miles above a lot of the other stuff here. There is uh, I Won't Dance by uh, Celtic Frost. I like that they used that song on here. Uh, and then you got some thrash metal. Uh, you got uh, Creator, which uh, is cool. Uh, it's Toxic Trace. So, you know, uh, one of their fiercer songs. Uh, Breaking the Silence by Heathen, which is a great, fantastic song. And then I don't know why they went with Boots. Megadeth cover song. Uh, weird choice. 
but some cool more like 80s and 70s metal on here but with some strange choices every now and then and the last one i consider this to be a compilation to the best of bond james bond uh 22 songs from uh, the james bond movies um up until i think golden eyes probably the latest one in here actually i'm not sure um or yeah the world is not enough i think that's the most recent one so up until i guess the late 90s and while some of the bond movies don't hold up anymore some of them do some of them don't i think the roger moore ones are a bit too silly uh, now when i watch them now moonraker i think is horrible some of them hold up some of them don't no matter what you think of the bond movies uh, there are some genuinely good songs in the soundtrack. Uh, of course, there's the theme from, from Dr. No, just the James Bond theme. That's a classic, and, and uh, I think it's great. you got you know Goldfinger by Shirley Bassey. That's a fantastic song. Uh, there are two other, Diamonds Are Forever and Moonraker, also with her. They're, they're good too, but they don't hold a candle to... Uh, to Goldfinger, there's Thunderball, Tom Jones, that's a fantastic song too, um, You Only Live Twice, that's a great song as well, um, and then there's like uh, from uh, On Her Majesty's uh, Secret Service, uh, there is um, We Have All the Time in the World with Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong, I think that's actually a very, very good enjoyable song just because of his vocals there's also the sort of theme from that movie instrumental which i also quite enjoy uh tina turner's uh, golden eye her song is one of the, i think one of the best uh, bond soundtracks or songs from the soundtracks and that also goes for uh, gladys knight's license to kill i think that's a fantastic song uh, that's for sure I always liked uh, Live and Let Die. Uh, it's a very noisy rock song with a reggae bridge, but I like it. Um, and I actually also quite like uh, uh, Duran Duran's uh, View to a Kill and Aha's Living Daylights, although they're more like 80s pop uh, songs. You also have some very cheesy songs that don't really appeal to me, like uh, uh, nobody does it better from the spy who loved me that's not really my cup of tea uh, and some of the more I guess if we can even call it recent stuff now tomorrow never dies with Cheryl Crow too cheesy for me uh, the world is not enough by garbage I think that one is okay uh, and then you have from tomorrow never dies Moby's version of the James Bond theme which I think is utter shit and uh, there's a kind of an interesting uh, trailer version of the James Bond theme from GoldenEye, which is also shit, in my opinion. Um, but some, some very good songs, for sure. Some songs that just don't appeal to me, but I can, you know, I know them, and, and they're there, they exist. And there's also some other garbage not the band, although they're on here too. But yeah, it's interesting, uh, and it's it's a cool listen for sure. So, there you go. We made it through the BCLT that Simon sent me. Simon from the Pie Face channel. Go and check out his channel. Thanks to Simon for all of these CDs and the cassette tapes as well. Um, it's been a joy to explore all those... Uh, CDs and the cassette tapes uh, learned uh, or discovered a lot of new music, a lot of great music and some interesting stuff too. So there you go. Thanks to Simon and thanks for watching.